Thank you, Joey. That was beautiful. Thank you for beginning our worship in such a contemplative, lovely way. We're going to wait just another few seconds before we begin our worship. It's not quite 10 yet. Give folks a chance to log on and get settled in for worship. Where's Pie, Mama? <laughs> Hi, Coco. Hi. <laughs> If you are interested, everybody, in the chat box on Zoom, I've posted the sheet music for our three hymns this morning. So if you need more music to be able to sing along at home, which we hope you will do, mute it, sing along at home, uh, the sheet music is there. You can open it, you can download it, and it's available. Also, if you have a hymnal at home, the hymn numbers will be projected on the screen. So it is 10 o'clock and it is my great joy and honor to welcome you all to our Sunday worship at St. Dunstan's Episcopal Church located in Bethesda, Maryland. I am not located in Bethesda, Maryland this morning. I'm at my home in Alexandria, Virginia because of Wi-Fi issues in the office. Doesn't matter because thanks be to God for the gift of the technology of Zoom and Facebook, no matter where we are, we are able to worship God together. And that is one of the blessings. If there are blessings to be found in this pandemic time, that is one of them. And on that note, I will take a second just to welcome some friends of mine from a previous life in New York who are worshiping with us this morning. So glad that you are here. As we prepare for worship, let's take a moment just to settle ourselves. Your microphone, I believe, is muted, but just do a quick check. If there's a red line through the microphone, that means that you are muted. Please remain muted unless you are reading a prayer or a lesson or playing music so that we can all hear and worship together without the feedback and distraction that happens when more than one mic is open. A reminder too that you can add to our prayers by uh, just typing them in the chat box here on Zoom or on Facebook Live. And those prayers will be offered to God collectively. And let us begin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together, Almighty God. To you, all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is, oops, sorry, may be found at number 379 in the hymnal if you are following the hymnal at home. And our Minister of Music, Joey Arkfeld, will lead us in singing. Please remain muted and sing at home. And the music will begin in a moment. I am restarting my device did something weird, bear with me. Okay. foundation God who 
you, Joey. My friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, hearten us so that like Peter, we may have faith even when we fail. Grant that any recognition we receive brings worship not to ourselves, but to you. Through Jesus Christ, our liberator who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture, their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, here I am. So he said to him, go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, what are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, they have gone away, for I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. 
They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, what profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. We give you thanks, O God, and call upon your name. You make known your deeds among the peoples. We sing to you. We sing your praise and speak of your marvelous works. We glory in your holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek you rejoice. We search for you and your strength. We continue to seek your face. We remember the marvels you have done, the wonders and the judgments of your mouth. We, the offspring of Abraham, your servant, we, the children of Jacob, the chosen ones. Then you called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. You sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters, his neck they put in an iron collar. Until his prediction came to pass, your word, the most high, tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He sent him as a master overlooking his household, as a ruler over all his possessions to instruct his princes according to his will and to teach his elders wisdom. Alleluia. Our sequence hymn this morning may be found in the hymnal at number 679. Again, the sheet music is in the chat box and Joey will lead us in singing as we remain muted. Trusting him I shall not fear, for the Lord defends and shields me, and his saving help is near. So rejoice as you draw water from salvation's living spring. Great. 
Praise the Lord who has done great things, and all works his might proclaim. Zion, lift your voice in singing, for with you has come to dwell in your very midst the great and reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. In the name of the one true Father and Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. This morning, we find the disciples back on the Sea of Galilee. They are exhausted, exhilarated, and hoping to rest. For it's been a long, hot, and dry day. Jesus has healed many men, women, and children, and fed the entire crowd miraculously with five loaves and two fish. As the last basket of leftovers is taken up, Jesus immediately gives the disciples their marching orders. Get back into the boat, go on ahead to the other side, and I will meet you in Genesaret. Setting out on the boat amidst the late afternoon sunshine, the disciples can see Jesus heading up the mountain to pray until he fades away in the dusk. Suddenly, the disciples find themselves mid-sea in the midst of a powerful storm with winds howling and waves forming large crests and spray coming in over the gunnels of the boat. The boat is tossing back and forth and up and down, and the night seems to just drag on with the darkness becoming so thick they cannot see each other's faces. But as fishermen do, the disciples just keep taking turns, rowing, hoping the boat will make its way to the other side, praying and wondering Where is Jesus? About daybreak, one of them sees a small light bursting through the gloom. And what seems at first like a ray of sunlight 
slowly begins to transform into a luminous specter, a vision of a man walking toward them on the waves. Could it be the ghost of John the Baptist? Or maybe even the ghost of Jesus whom Herod has now killed? The disciples are terrified. But sensing their terror, even from afar, Jesus immediately draws near to them. Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And as they hear that familiar, warm voice in those words of assurance that had been spoken before by angels and Jesus himself, the fog begins to clear and their hearts stop pounding. It is Jesus. All of them breathe this big sigh of relief and feel satisfied. Well, all except Peter. Peter wants to hear more than Jesus' comforting words. Peter wants to see more than Jesus' ability to defy gravity. Peter wants to be with Jesus. Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Come. So Peter scrambles out of the boat, stabilizing himself on the boat's gunnels and takes those first steps toward Jesus until distracted by the wind, he begins to sink. Lord, save me. Even in this moment, Peter has the wisdom to refocus on Jesus, to ask him for the help Peter really needed all along. And so for the third time, Jesus immediately reached out his hand, caught Peter and pulled him up, asking him, you of little faith, why do you doubt? And safely takes him back to the boat and calms the storm. Now, many preachers have focused on the miracle of Peter stepping out in faith and briefly walking on the water, on Peter's desire to be a water walker. And that can be a good lesson because there are times Jesus calls us out, calls us out in courage to risk and trust and step out of the boat, even in the storms of our lives. But I would like to look at the story from a different angle. As you recall, it was not Jesus, but Peter who challenged Jesus to command him to walk on the water. Peter, who was brazen enough to dare Jesus with words that sound much to me like Satan's second dare in the wilderness. If you were the son of God, throw yourself down. And Peter, who is crazy enough to get out of the boat in the middle of a gale. Can you just imagine what the disciples in the boat are saying? Peter, what in the world are you thinking? We're in the middle of this storm and you're jumping overboard? You are a fool risking our lives too. But if I listen closely and find myself pointing a finger at Peter, there are three fingers pointing back at me. Peter's recklessness reminds me about a part of myself a part of myself, as we used to say in the Navy, that operates from the vantage point of ready, fire, aim. Many of us, I believe, have an inner Peter who can surface during life's storms, sometimes rather loudly and sometimes more softly. Our inner Peter reminds us that we live lives of holy imperfection. As humans, we naturally wonder and doubt and may even test Jesus from time to time. 
I've found my inner Peter tends to emerge when life just feels overwhelming or there's pressure with time or family or friends or even social media to just do something. How easily I can forget to ask, is this what Jesus is calling me to do? Or am I asking Jesus to do what I want him to do? Just this week, a commentary writer reminded me that my inner Peter tends to materialize when I focus on me and the miracles I want to happen. And I forget about how my actions might impact the others around me still in the boat. As the storms we're all facing in these months of quarantine seem to mount, those threats to our health, our well being, our finances, our relationships, so does the risk that our inner Peter will try to shove us out of the boat in fear and try to walk on water, forgetting about our human limitations and our belief in God's abundant mercy and grace. But Jesus calls Peter and us to a sobering question. You of little faith, why do you doubt? This week, I have wondered whether Jesus sees Peter's little faith as his looking away on the water or his initial choice to get out of the boat. And I've come to believe that Peter's little faith was not losing track momentarily of where Jesus was, but rather his little faith was not embracing who Jesus is, who Peter knew Jesus to be. Peter thought he needed to see and hear and even be right next to Jesus to touch him when ironically Jesus was there all the time. Jesus doesn't stop Peter, nor does he stop us from getting out of the boat. We have a God who invites us to embrace our freedom to choose, to risk stepping out to learn and stumble and deal with the consequences of our actions and hopefully to grow in our faith. We have a God who sent his only son, Jesus, to be with us, to face the consequences of our decisions. Jesus, whom God sent to help us find the calm in the storms, especially when we choose to turn back to Jesus and receive the gift of his steady hand to help us lift us back into the boat. We have a God whose only son, Jesus, gave his life for the forgiveness of our sins, if we can just believe and accept his gift of eternal life. For many of us have this inner Peter that both can react out of fear from time to time, but also an inner Peter who is willing to live in the faith we have to return, to refocus, and to receive the gift of God's mercy and grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My friends, let us now join together in proclaiming our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. As we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray together in the words that Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Marianne and Chilton, our bishops, Patty, our rector, and all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for the president, the members of Congress, the justices of the Supreme Court, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. We pray for all those on our parish prayer list. For Donna Alman, Nancy Bancroft, Richard and Florence Banks, Angie Blake Moore, Phil Carroll, Bill Darnell, Kenny Farnsworth, Warren Green, the Hamilton family, Hanson, Anya Hine, Barbara and John Hawker, Fergie Horvath, Mac Johnston, Jason and Amy Krill and their family, Jen Noberini, Julie Petersmeyer, Pam Plaisance, Kurt Shively, Allison Spaulding, Lena Verville, Pat von Rautenkranz, and Don Wassman. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We remember all who have died recently, including Sylvia O'Connor, Private First Class Brian J. Baltiera, Lance Corporal Mark, Marco Albaranco, Private First Class, Class Evan A. Bath, U.S. Navy Hospitalman Christopher Nem, Private First Class Jack Ryan Ostrovsky, Lance Corporal Guillermo S. Perez, Corporal Wesley A. Rod, Lance Corporal Chase D. Sweetwood, and Corporal Cesar Avianueva. We pray as well for all those killed in the explosion in Beirut as well as for those who lost their lives in the plane crash in Kerala, India. Give to all the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, silently and out loud. My friends, I invite you, if you have a prayer of intercession or petition or thanksgiving, to unmute yourself and offer it at this time. For Cindy and Summer, 
For Emily and Laz. For Matt. For Becky. For Corey. For AJ. For Barb. I pray for all students who soon will be going back to school in one form or another. For those who are going back in person for their safety, their health, their wisdom, that they might make good choices. I give thanks for the gift of this community and the ways in which it continues to be Christian community, even in these extraordinary times. We praise you, faithful God, for the steadfast love which has always guided us, for the promise which has never faltered, for the light which has lightened our way, for the story which has reminded us of those who came before us, for your steadfast love and mercies new with each morning, we join with one the voice to give you praise and thanks. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. My sisters and brothers, Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is, in fact, the Navy hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. Please make sure you are muted and sing with us from home. sleep 
My friends, may the seas lie smooth before you. May a gentle breeze forever fill your sands. May sunshine warm your face and kindness warm your soul. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all those you love from this day forth and forevermore. Amen. All right, this is the moment, friends. Please unmute yourself so we can share the peace with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And, and also with you. I invite you to offer God's peace to one another here on Zoom or on Facebook or at home. Hi, everybody. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. <laughs> All right. Peace be with the pups. <laughs> I don't know which precious creature that was, but peace be with you. All of ours are sleeping. <laughs> oh, well, it is wonderful to have you all here with us for worship this morning. And this past week, I realized that July came and went, and we did not offer birthday or anniversary prayers. And if you celebrated a birthday or anniversary in July, please accept my apology, but it's never too late to ask God's blessing. So this morning we will do prayers for birthdays and anniversaries in July and August. So if you follow fall in one of those categories, please identify yourself now so that we can be here and with you. Uh, Karen, when's your birthday? On Wednesday, the 12th. Aha! Excellent. Whoops! Does anybody else have a birthday in July? I had a birthday in July, July 23rd. Barbara. Barbara, wonderful. Fred, did I see your hand? Uh, no, but we had an anniversary in July. Cool. Well, that's, when was your anniversary? Uh, July 11th. Louise, is he right? Sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just teasing. Regardless Anybody? of what I said, I hope she would agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> I have a birthday Careful. coming up on August 29th. Is that, is that you, Anne? Yes, it is. Hi. Anne. All right. So, Anne, happy birthday coming up. And Sue Carol? Yeah, August 5th was my birthday. Yay! Perfect. And Lydia and I will celebrate our 22nd wedding anniversary on August 22nd. So I ask for prayers for us. Tony's birthday is the 16th, a week from today. Aha! Uh -huh. Happy birthday to Tony. Excellent. Oh, no. Thank you for your daddy today. All right. Anybody else? 
Even though Nancy is not on, she had a birthday on August 4th. Whose birthday? Rosie. Nancy Douglas. Oh, one, that's right, yes. We'll, we'll celebrate and pray for Nancy as well. Excellent. Okay. So for all of those who have celebrated or will celebrate the birthday in July and August, let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up when they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace pass us all understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 And for those celebrating wedding anniversaries. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they begin together. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Um, Amen. All right. Are we feeling brave and in good voice? We can do this without muting. So, Maestro, <laughs> if you would lead us in singing. But everybody else, please unmute and just make one more joyful noise. It doesn't matter if it's pretty. We'll just we'll sing and celebrate everybody who is having a birthday or has had a birthday. All right. Over to you, Joey. Birthday cake. announcements before I take us off of Facebook Live. I invite those who are on Zoom to stick around for a few minutes of coffee hour. Um, this coming Friday, which must be August 14th, I am going to be away because alas, it is time for us to take our dear son back to North Carolina for college. So for those who usually join us for Friday fellowship, I am either going to ask somebody else if they would host the Zoom or else we will just take a week off and regather the following week. So be thinking if you are a fellowship person and wouldn't mind hosting the Zoom, just let me know. Otherwise we'll wait another week and we'll regather then. Are there other announcements? Donna, we have book group coming up this week, right? That is right, Thursday at 2.30. And Chuck is going to give us a link, a Zoom link, right? He is uh, the master of the Zoom. Yes, excellent. We, we might need to get him a t-shirt that says that. And what is the subject this month, Donna? Uh, the subject is just discussing what books we've read and sharing with others, but no one particular book. That sounds like a great conversation. Wonderful. I look forward to being with you for that. So 2.30 on Thursday, and we will send out the Zoom link in plenty of time for everyone who wants to to participate. Are there any other announcements for the good of the order? I want to, on behalf of everybody, I want to thank Robin for offering our homily this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your good words and for framing that familiar gospel story in a new way for many of us. Very good. All right. Well, I am going to take us off of Facebook Live. So if you are worshiping with us on Facebook, thank you for being here. We are so delighted by your presence. Feel free to come on over to Zoom and join us. And for those who are on Zoom, I hope that many or most will be able to stay and chat for a few minutes. So let's